Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Today we got a great Ask a Ninja. A homeowner wants to know, you know, he's putting outside insulation on his house and he was wanting to know, does he actually need rim joist insulation if he's going ahead and insulating the exterior of the house? Stay tuned. If you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, insulation, and indoor air quality. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Ring that notifications bell. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. If you're a DIYer, check out our DIY store. And if you'd like a business opportunity, we hope you check out our franchise opportunities. So this question comes from Jeffrey in Missouri. If I'm putting a half inch foam board on the outside of my house, top to bottom of sill plate over the Tyvek, but under the siding, do I need to insulate the rim joist in my crawl space? Well, uh, Jeffrey, that is a great question. Rim joist insulation actually has two purposes, okay? Uh, the first purpose, uh, for many people, they don't understand, but whenever they're building a home, they actually shove fiberglass into the rim joist section of the crawl space. Now, that is the part, the little cavity right above the sill plate. The sill plate rests on the foundation wall, which is usually made of block or concrete or stone or something like that. So you got your foundation wall uh, that's touching the dirt, then you got the sill plate, which is normally pressure treated wood, and then all the other wood sits on that sill plate. And that cavity right there is called the rim joist insulation. Many years ago, uh, buildingscience.com called that a critical seal whenever you insulate that rim joist. And we've been preaching about that for a long time. But normally during normal building, building practices, they will take fiberglass insulation and shove in the rim joist while they're also putting subfloor insulation. And the purpose of that is to create a thermal barrier between the temperature of the crawl space and the outside temperature. Because believe it or not, the rim joist insulation area is very thin in most cases. Most people, uh, especially older homes, do not have insulation on the outside as Jeffrey is describing, he's currently doing. So that rim joist insulation creates an air or a uh, thermal barrier that keeps that rim joist from condensating. Believe it or not, if it's really cold outside and warm in the crawl space, I have seen the wood of that rim joist give off moisture due to condensation because of the extreme temperatures coming together right there. So that's one purpose of that. And what you're describing, Jeffrey, will eliminate the need of the rim joist insulation based on that one purpose. But keep in mind, rim joist insulation has two purposes. The other thing that most people don't use rim joist insulation for is to air seal the air between the crawl space and the living space, okay? Which in my opinion is probably the most overlooked area of home insulation is the rim joist. Obviously everybody knows to insulate the attic, but most people don't understand that you should insulate the basement rim joist and the crawl space rim joist because the air in that unconditioned crawl space or encapsulated crawl space travels right up that rim joist into the wall cavity of the floor above it, whether you have outside insulation on or not. So Jeffrey, I hope that helps. You definitely need to still insulate the rim joist even if you have a foam board on the outside of the house as you're describing. Now, you may not have to put, like we do, foam board and then uh, spray foam it because you already have that outside foam board insulation. So possibly what you could do is take a bead of spray foam and just spray you know, that gap where the uh, rim joist and the subfloor meet and that way it'll keep that air from traveling up into the living space. And since the rim joist insulation is so important at stopping the air from moving from the crawl space up into the wall, the thing, the catalyst that causes the air to move up into the wall is typically your attic is drafted. So it's drafting the air up through the wall, through the rim joist insulation. And also they see a spike in, uh, in drafting up the wall whenever the AC or heat turns on. So the, the fan motor inside that HVAC system is churning. You've got an attic that is drafted. So that air, along with the stack effect, that air in that crawl space or basement just wants to skeet right up that wall. And of course, when you're sitting there watching TV and you feel a draft, a lot of that drafting is coming from those wall outlets in the living space and, 
and uh, you know major penetrations in the subfloor. So again, Jeffrey, make sure you air seal as many penetrations in that crawl space subfloor as you can. And I really believe that'll help your home and your energy efficiency, but more importantly, help you stay comfortable in the summer and the winter. I'm Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day and we'll see you later.